Hello. Hello, everyone. Hello. 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 Hello, Anna. Hello, teacher. How are you? Nice to see you again. How are you? Let me put the, the lights on because you cannot see me, maybe. <laughs> I am very dark. Oh, hello, Catherine. How are you? Hello, teacher. Hello, hello. Very good. <laughs> pretty good. Yeah, I see you. You're pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so it is just you and Anna, the ones that I was alone completely at the beginning. And I said, hmm, did they forget that today we have class? <laughs> oh, aquí estoy. <laughs> okay. Pues ando, ando despeinada, bitch. Oh, I'm just taking a shower, you see? It is okay. <laughs> sí, I'm just taking a no shower. Se no me lo he secado. Uh, yeah, my, my case is the same. <laughs> I didn't dry my hair. Uh, I, I, I don't like it. I don't like it because you, you, you use a lot of power also. It is expensive. Dice, ya que veo que vamos poquito, fíjese que hay una, hay un, una, una prueba que no la, no, no he salido bien en ninguna. Are you sure? Como, Sí, no, no me ha salido bien, no he respondido eh, casi ninguna. No sé cómo hacerla. Ya intenté de varias formas y no, definitivamente no me sale. Oh, but we already uh, seen that or is a uh, further in the content? Ah, the content, content. But is already seen or is Which, in the future? Uh, Which lesson? Uh, Which lesson? Uh, number no three, me. number four. Um, la voy a buscar, teacher, for me. Okay. Okay, let me see if we can have the, let me see, I think contents, 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 you are E2. Let me share the screen. I too. It is raining on your on your area. No. Is it um, raining on your houses? No. Es la sección tres. Yes. Yes. Hello, Mario. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> Hello. I'm fine. Better than than yesterday. <laughs> yeah, that is the attitude. <laughs> <laughs> That is the attitude. Okay, so uh, let me see. I, I hate to look like, I, that is better. I hate to look like very dark, but I don't have, I would like to buy a lamp, a special lamp, because this, this light is too poor. Menos mal que es poco de light. Menos mal. Okay, now I can see me better. <laughs> okay, so let me see, let me share. Are you seeing my screen with the content? Yeah? Yes. Okay, 3.5. In this class, you will listen to an audio about the, oh, this is about the carnival. We already did it. 
mm, 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 mm. oh wedding customs that is that is that is very funny in this session is 3.7 in this session you will listen listen and practice a conversation about wedding customs do you know what is wedding customs no wedding what is a wedding it is here como costumbre de una boda, como lo que se hace en una boda. Entonces es, remember in this uh, unit, number three, we are talking about celebrations, parties, carnival, parades, and that, that was the vocabulary in the beginning. So uh, we will be reviewing here that verbial clauses of time will be introduced. En esta lección escucharán y practicarán una conversación sobre las costumbres de una boda. Cláusulas adverbiales de tiempo serán presentadas. Ok, let's pay attention to the video. Hi. Listen to the following conversation and find out how people in Japan celebrate their weddings. Pay attention to what they do before and after a ceremony. Listen and practice. Your wedding pictures are really beautiful, Emiko. Thank you. Those pictures were taken right after the ceremony. Where was the ceremony? At a shrine. When people get married in Japan, they sometimes have the ceremony at a shrine. That's interesting. Were there a lot of people there? Well, usually only family members and close friends go to the ceremony. But afterward, we had a reception with family and friends. So, what are receptions like in Japan? There's a big dinner, and after the food is served, the guests give speeches or sing songs. It sounds like fun. It really is. And then, before the guests leave, the bride and groom give them presents. The guests get presents? Yes. And the guests give money to the bride and groom. Listen to the rest of the conversation. What did the bride and groom give each guest? I'm curious. What did you and your husband give everyone? Well, sugar is a symbol of happiness in Japan. So we gave each guest a ceramic box filled with sweets. What a nice custom. It sounds like it was a wonderful day. Oh, it really was. Oh, okay. It's very long. The it's audio. a big dinner. Because we will play it again. Ceremony. Listen and practice. Your wedding pictures are really beautiful, Emiko. Thank you. Those pictures were taken right after the ceremony. Where was the ceremony? At a shrine. When people get married in Japan, they sometimes have the ceremony at a shrine. That's interesting. Were there a lot of people there? Well, Usually, only family members and close friends go to the ceremony. But afterward, we had a reception with family and friends. So, what are receptions like in Japan? There's a big dinner, and after the food is served, the guests give speeches or sing songs. It sounds like fun. It really is. And then, before the guests leave, the bride and groom give them presents. The guests get presents? Yes. 
and the guests give money to the bride and groom. Listen to the rest of the conversation. What did the bride and groom give each guest? I'm curious. What did you and your husband give everyone? Well, sugar is a symbol of happiness in Japan. So we gave each guest a ceramic box filled with sweets. What a nice custom. It sounds like it was a wonderful day. Oh, it really was. Okay, so uh, what did you understand about the dialogue? What did you catch from the, from the audio about a wedding in Japan? They are talking about uh, uh, a wedding. Uh, a wedding, uh, Emilia, mm -hmm. I think so. I, I, I don't, I don't see very well, <laughs> but. Oh yeah, it is too short and it's a little bit blurry. It's very blurry. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. And let me, because this is YouTube, maybe. Um, I'm just, um, let me have the HD. I don't know, it's not improving. Speed, no, uh, well, I cannot improve the quality of the image. Hmm. So, uh, why do this? Oh, it's worse, it's worse. And also I lost my, oh, here it is. Okay, let's translate, I will translate for you. Uh, Jill, Jill is the one that is not from Japan, is the lady at the left side that is seated, is a blonde one. Uh, Jill is asking, your wedding pictures are really beautiful, Emiko. Tus fotos de la boda son realmente hermosas, Emiko. Emiko, gracias, thank you. These pictures were taken right after the ceremony. Estas fotos fueron tomadas eh, como después de, exactamente después de la ceremonia. Jill, where was the ceremony? ¿Dónde fue la ceremonia? Emiko, at a shrine. Shrine es capilla. Shrine, shrine. Eh, como tirándole a Basilica por ahí. <laughs> Es una basílica, como decir la basílica de Guadalupe, la ceiba, por ahí. Uh -huh. eh, when people get married to, in Japan, they sometimes have a ceremony at a shrine. Cuando la gente se casa en Japón, ellos algunas veces tienen la ceremonia en una basílica. Eso es extraño, ¿verdad? Porque católicos. ¿verdad? Y ahí pues hay mucho budismo. Entonces dice Jill. That's interesting. Were there a lot of people there? Eso es interesante. Había mucha gente ahí. Eh, allá, mejor dicho. Eh, well, well, what is it? Well, actually only family members and close friends go to the ceremony. But after work, we had a reception with family and friends. Bueno, eh, de hecho, solo la los miembros de la familia y eh, amigos cercanos van a la ceremonia. Pero después de todo, tenemos una recepción con la familia y amigos. Jill, no. What are receptions like in Japan? No. ¿Cómo son? ¿A qué se parecen las recepciones en Japón? En Japón, perdón. <laughs> Emiko, there's a big dinner. And after the food is served, the guests give speeches or sing songs. Hay una gran cena. Y después de... And after the... The what? The fixing. 
no leo tampoco, ¿qué es lo que dice? <risa> después de que, de que la, la cena, después de que la cena es servida, los invitados dan discursos y cantan canciones. Jill, it sounds like fun, suena divertido. Emiko, it's really, it, it really is. And, and then before the guests leave, guests leave, the bride and groom give them presents. Le dice Miko, de verdad que lo es. Y entonces, eh, antes de que los invitados se vayan, la novia y el novio, bride es novia y groom es novio, dan, eh, le dan eh, regalos. Y le dice Jill, los the guests get present, presents, los invitados le dan regalos y le dice Miko, yes, and the guests give money to the bride and groom. Sí, y los invitados le dan dinero a la novia y al novio. Eso aquí también, ¿verdad? Le ponen billetes al, al vestido de la novia. <ríe> o le dan de sobre, regalo de sobre. Entonces, um, that is the main conversation. And uh, there is a question here at the end that is asking, uh, What did the bride and groom give each guest? Guest, did you hear? Did you listen? That what is the present from the groom and the bride for the for the guests? It's a tradition. It's like a. It's a very spiritual concept. Let like they let like Emiko explained. They mentioned something about sugar. Did you understand that? Yep. Okay. Uh, like uh, like uh, rice for us. Uh, I think so. Mm, rice is also a, a very uh, a sacred, very sacred. Es bien sagrado. Si están arroz y dejan un granito, es un gran insulto. Para ellos el arroz es bien sagrado que le dejen como aquí dejar tortillas. O bueno, algo así. Pero ya no desperdicen nada. Eh, Okay, but what does it mean sugar for them? I'm not listening, Subeida. Hello, teacher. Uh -huh. I think it's a symbol for the happiness. They mention a specific word. What does, what does it mean sugar? Is a motivation mm. of abundance. Es como abundancia, ¿verdad? Mm. Todo eso. Entonces, este, ¿qué le, qué, entonces qué, ¿cuál es el presente que los novios le dan a los invitados? Acuérdense que los invitados les dan dinero a ellos. Entonces, ellos les, les corresponden con que les, de, les traiga abundancia, pues, o sea, como como me das algo, entonces yo te prospero más, ¿verdad? Ellos creen en esas cosas. Ah, yo también. <laughs> you know I'm a Japan, Japanese eh, descendant. I have Japanese blood in my, in my skin. <laughs> um, what is the present? They mentioned like a ceramic. Mm -hmm. The box of ceramic mm -hmm. and filled with with sugar. No, no, a kind of sugar. What is sugar? Something like children like a lot. Candies. Exactly, <laughs> candies. <laughs> that is that is like like uh, something similar to sugar. So they give to them candies. So maybe that is because why <laughs> here they give chocolates. <laughs> they give chocolates to the, to the, pre, to the, like, como recuerditos, pero esto es como los recuerditos que le dan, solo que ellos le dan como un presente. Entonces le dan candies. Eso es lo que dice. Le dan una, una caja de cerámica eh, llena de, de dulces, porque significa como que están evocando la, la abundancia por medio del azúcar. That is the, the answer. 
So everything is clear for everyone. The dialogue and the, the, the what is the tradition about? Yes? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Let me go to the other topic. Okay, 3.9, almost done. Okay, and we are missing two. Oh my God, we are running. Okay, by the end of this session, you will be able to notice the stress and rhythm in sentences. Al final de esta lección, ustedes serán capaces de identificar la fuerza de voz y el ritmo en las oraciones. Esto es como el acento fonético, ¿verdad? Okay, that is pronunciation, stress and rhythm. Pronunciation, stress and rhythm. Part A, listen and practice. Notice how stressed words and syllables occur with a regular rhythm. When people get married in Japan, they sometimes have the ceremony at a shrine. In Japan, when he is reading this, this lady, it, the, this circle or bowl, white bowl, it is uh, pointing to the syllable that is with the stress in the voice. So when people get married, I'm, I'm exaggerating, married in Japan, they sometimes have the ceremony at a shrine, okay? So if I'm reading is the, the, if, uh, the strength of the voice. When people get married in Japan, they sometimes have, have the ceremony at a shrine. That is what they are uh, trying to, to, to show us. Okay, let's continue. They sometimes have the ceremony at a shrine. Hello everyone. Now that you have listened to the previous sentences, try to give the right stress and rhythm to the following ones. Then play the audio program to check on your pronunciation. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, who wants to uh, show us? where the stress goes in these sentences. See? Educratically. I tried. Okay, to... Mario. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, after the ceremony, there's a reception with the family and friends. With the family is not, where is there? It's only white family. <laughs> <laughs> but but tell us where is the stress in every word? Um uh, okay. <laughs> um every word after after um I don't know how we identify. Um, in the is not necessary because it's only one syllable. Ceremony, maybe I'm interested in ceremony. Um, the at the beginning. <laughs> uh -huh, at the, the beginning. beginning, okay. It's the same the case like for after. Uh -huh, after the ceremony. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a reception mm -hmm, in the middle uh, uh -huh. Uh -huh, in the middle exactly with family at the beginning mm -hmm. i think so some friends okay yeah that is correct that is perfect thank you mario okay. so let's go with elena can you please make the number two before the guests leave the bride and groom give them presents where is the stress? Before, it's, I think it's B. 
No. Because if you say in the beginning is before, but you say before is at the end. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, it's at the end. <laughs> yeah, it's at the end. Okay. And then there are only two, only two, only one act, only one is stress. The guest leave. That is now complicated. But the yes. bride is also not complicated and room we'll give them uh it's only at the at the final word presence uh-huh where is the stress breath mm. mm -hmm. otherwise if you said presents is a verb it's not a noun it's a verb when it's when it says Metro Goldwyn Mayor presents Jim Carrey and Keanu Reeves and Sandra Bullock. That is a presentation, but in this case, it's a noun that is gifts, right? So if you don't put the stress, it the uh, it will mean a different word, totally, totally, complete different meaning, right? Yeah. Thank you, Elena. Okay, last one. I will give the opportunity for someone to be a voluntary. Who wants to participate? Hmm. Who said who said that? No, no one. Oh, Anna, okay. Go <laughs> with, the, with the last one. The guest usually mm -hmm. give, um, give money to the bride. Ah, money, where is the ah? No, <laughs> es que lo veo borroso, teacher. No sé cómo. No Are sé cómo you using glasses? Eh, no, 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 sé por, no sé por qué me está pareciendo así. Se ve un poquito, no está tan buena la resolución, pero si está, sí está buena. Eh, eh, good morning. Uh -huh, but what is good morning? Usually. Morning. What is uh -huh. the stress? Usually. Usually. Uh -huh. Middle? No. Uh, beginning. Uh -huh. Correct. It's, a, it's uh -huh. you. Usually. Okay. Usually. And money? Money. Um, money. Oh, yeah. Beginning. Yes, in the beginning. And uh, the other is, well, bride and groom is only one syllable pronunciation. So that was only for usually and money. The other ones uh, that are like a net neutral stress because they are only one syllable. Okay, thank you for the participation. Let's continue uh, reading. Oh, the video is okay. Listen to the stress and rhythm in these sentences. Then practice them. After the ceremony, there's a reception with family and friends. Before the guests leave, the bride and groom give them presents. The guests usually give money to the bride and groom. Okay. 3.11. By the end of this class, you will be exposed to adverbial classes of time. What they are and their use. In esta clase, ustedes serán expuestos a las cláusulas adverbiales de tiempo, lo que son y su uso. Adverbio es lo que modifica el verbo, ¿verdad? Entonces, es como la frecuencia que hacemos una acción. Ok. Let's listen to this lady.
Hi, I have a question for you. What is an adverbial clause of time? I'll give you a hint. An adverbial clause of time can't occur alone as it needs a main idea. Stay around and listen to the explanation and follow the examples for better understanding. Adverbial clauses of time. When people get married in Japan, they sometimes have the ceremony at a shrine. After the food is served, the guests give speeches or sing songs. Before the guests leave, the bride and groom give them presents. We're going to break this for you so you may understand it better. There are many types of adverbial clauses, but in this session, we want you to learn about adverbial clause of time. Let's define what an adverbial clause is. An adverbial clause of time describes or defines the when something happens. Adverbial clauses of time are easy to identify because they begin with a subordinating conjunction. For example, when, after, before, since, until, while, whenever. We invite you to ask your teacher to give you a list of subordinating conjunctions as a reference. You may be wondering what does a subordinating conjunction do? A subordinating conjunction joins two sentences, one sentence being called dependent or subordinated and another sentence being independent or main clause. As said in the intro video, an adverbial clause of time can't occur on its own because it makes no sense. It is not complete. We will take a look at some examples. Once you see them, you will know what we're talking about here. When she comes home, she will read a bedtime story. Let's analyze this sentence. When is a subordinating conjunction or adverb. She is the subject comes the verb. Now, when she comes home, all together is a subordinating or dependent clause, meaning it is not complete. It depends on some other idea. You expect more information. She will read a bedtime story is a main clause or independent clause, meaning it makes perfect sense alone. What we're doing now is making a more complex sentence. Let's work with another example. Before she went to school, she finished all her homework. I will give you a couple of minutes to break down this sentence. Try to do as we did on our previous example. So let's do it together. Before, subordinating conjunction or adverb. She, the subject. Went, the verb. Before she went to school is a subordinated or dependent clause. And she finished all her homework is a main or independent clause. Excellent, well done. Before we go, it is important for you to know that an adverbial clause of time can appear either at the beginning of the entire sentence or in the middle of it. It is okay to say, since they got married, they have traveled around the world, or they have traveled around the world since they got married. The only difference is the use of a comma if the subordinating conjunction begins the sentence. Can you give us now two examples? Do so in our discussion box. Oh my God, this is the longest audio we have listened. Okay, do you understand kids or do you want me to play it again one more time? No. One more time. Okay, Elena. 
Oh, no, no problem. I will do it again. My pleasure. Hi, I have a question for you. What is an adverbial clause of time? I'll give you a hint. An adverbial clause of time can't occur alone as it needs a main idea. It stay around and listen to the explanation and follow the examples for better understanding. Adverbial clauses of time. When people get married in Japan, they sometimes have the ceremony at a shrine. After the food is served, the guests give speeches or sing songs. Before the guests leave, the bride and groom give them presents. We're going to break this for you so you may understand it better. There are many types of adverbial clauses, but in this session, we want you to learn about adverbial clause of time. Let's define what an adverbial clause is. An adverbial clause of time describes or defines the when something happens. Adverbial clauses of time are easy to identify because they begin with a subordinating conjunction. For example, when, after, before, since, until, while, whenever. We invite you to ask your teacher to give you a list of subordinating conjunctions as a reference. You may be wondering what does a subordinating conjunction do? A subordinating conjunction joins two sentences, one sentence being called dependent or subordinated and another sentence being independent or main clause. As said in the intro video, an adverbial clause of time can't occur on its own because it makes no sense. It is not complete. We will take a look at some examples. Once you see them, you will know what we're talking about here. When she comes home, she will read a bedtime story. Let's analyze this sentence. When is a subordinating conjunction or adverb. She is the subject comes the verb. Now, when she comes home, all together is a subordinating or dependent clause, meaning it is not complete. It depends on some other idea. You expect more information. She will read a bedtime story is a main clause or independent clause, meaning it makes perfect sense alone. What we're doing now is making a more complex sentence. Let's work with another example. Before she went to school, she finished all her homework. I will give you a couple of minutes to break down this sentence. Try to do as we did on our previous example. So let's do it together. Before, subordinating conjunction or adverb. She, the subject. Went, the verb. Before she went to school is a subordinated or dependent clause. And she finished all her homework is a main or independent clause. Excellent, well done. Before we go, it is important for you to know that an adverbial clause of time can appear either at the beginning of the entire sentence or in the middle of it. It is okay to say, since they got married, they have traveled around the world, or they have traveled around the world since they got married. The only difference is the use of a comma if the subordinating conjunction begins the sentence. Can you give us now two examples? Do so in our discussion box. Okay, this is the, the video. Now it's more clear for you. Yes, sure. Okay, yeah, okay, perfect. Perfect, let me see. 
it's through the explanation of these classes. It is, uh, I was uh, seeing a, a list. Gives us a it reference. This one. Yep. And what does it mean is it's very uh, interesting. For example, when, cuando, after, después, before, antes, since, desde, until, hasta. Esta se puede abreviar solo poniendo till uh, con doble L, ¿verdad? La palabra no la lleva, pero cuando se pone till, doble L es lo mismo, until, hasta. Eh, while, mientras, whenever, cuando sea. O sea, cuando, el momento que sea, ¿verdad? Whenever. Así como la canción de la Shakira de whenever, forever. O sea, whenever, donde sea, para siempre. No me acuerdo qué es lo que le dice, pero <ríe> le dice que donde sea, como sea, pero que ahí va a estar ella. Entonces, este, esto es importante, ¿verdad? Porque también deben observar eh, la coma, ¿verdad? When we are beginning with the adverbial, adverbial word is since they, the since they got me area, comma, they have traveled around the world. Desde que ellos se casaron, ellos han viajado alrededor del mundo. Oh, they have traveled around the world since they got married. Cuando va since en medio, no se ocupa la coma. Ellos han viajado alrededor del mundo desde que se casaron. No hay eh, razón por la cual poner la coma. ¿verdad? Entonces, cuando empezamos con la adverbial clause, ponemos coma. Y cuando no, la hacemos una oración seguida. Como uh -huh. ella dijo en la mañana, es en la mañana, en el video, este, pues estamos formando frases más, eh, más complicadas, ¿verdad? Ya no es tan, tan sencillito, ¿verdad? Porque estas sí están más, más grandes, más largas. Entonces tenemos que eh, puntuarlas, ¿verdad? Puntuarlas más, eh, un poquito más acertadas, ¿verdad? Entonces, siguiente, ¿verdad? Aquí, por ejemplo, hay un, hay, un, hay un ejemplo en la discussion. After she finished the job, aquí en, empezamos con la cláusula, ¿verdad? La adverbial. She's going to take her break. Después que ella termine el trabajo, se va a tomar su descanso. Since they play piano, another. Since is the beginning, so we use comma. They do not have time to go out. Desde que, tienen, desde que ellos tocan el piano, ellos no tienen tiempo de salir. Ok, so let's do an exercise. Let's interchange the order of the sentence. She's going to take her break after she finished her job. And it is the same meaning, but you're not using the comma. And the other one is they don't have time to go out since they play piano. It, it is uh, the same, the same meaning, but without a comma. So we, if you want to try that, uh, if it's correct, you have to see that you can interchange the order of the sentence and everything is working properly. That is one of the tips that I can give you. Oh no, let's check, this is exam. Mm -hmm. I will leave you to do it individually because it is, um, this is uh, about the adverbial or something like that. Let me see. No, this is about celebrations. Is, is, the, is this the one that you were trying to do, Anna, uh, where you were having questions? No? No, teacher. Okay. I think it's lesson four, right? And we're still on lesson three. So let me pass this with the other one. Lesson objective 3.14. In this class, you will practice your reading skills for better understanding when scanning for specific information and understanding reference words. 
acuérdense que scanning es como, como lo dicen, me escaneaste, ¿verdad? O escaneaste la, a la chica, como que les pasan el scan de arriba para abajo, ¿verdad? O sea, que revisan bien. En esta clase practicarán sus habilidades de lectura para entender mejor cuando se busca información específica y entender las palabras de referencia. Ok, let's continue. Reading exercise, unique customs. Mm -hmm. Ok. Instructions, read the article. Based on the article, decide what these words refer to. Choose the right answer. Ok, let me zoom in. Zoom in. Oh no, this is, I will open it in Google Drive because it is not working. I hope these have a, a really good resolution. So, do you, are you able to see it? Yeah? Yes, it's Yes. Okay, perfect. So, let me see, one, two, three, four, five. Five volunteers to read unique customs. Remember, you, you have to practice. Oh, let me do it once so you can uh, listen to the pronunciation and then you will repeat it, okay? So let me begin. Unique customs. Acuérdense costumbre, ¿verdad? Costumbres únicas. Leemos de atrás para adelante. En inglés. Costumbres únicas. No únicas costumbres, sino costumbres únicas. Look at the photos. Oh, sorry. Look at the photos. What do you think is happening in each picture? Paragraph one. January 17 is St. Anthony's Day in Mexico. It's a day when people ask for protection for their animals by bringing them to church. But before the animals go into the church, the people usually dress them up in flowers and ribbons. Okay. Paragraph number two. On August 15 of the lunar calendar, Koreans celebrate Chuseok, also known as Korean Thanksgiving. It's a day when people give thanks for the harvest. Korean families honor their ancestors by going to their graves to take them rice and fruit and clean the graves, gra grave sites. Number three, Lung. Long ago in India, a princess who needed help sent her silk bracelet to an emperor. To an emperor, sorry. <laughs> Although he did not arrive in time to help her, he kept the bracelet as a sign of the bond between them. Today in India, during the festival of Raki, men promise to be loyal to their women. In exchange, the women give them a bracelet of silk, cotton, or gold thread. Paragraph four. One of the biggest celebrations in Argentina is New Year's Eve. On the evening of December 31st, families get together and have a big meal. At midnight, fireworks explode everywhere and continue throughout the night. This is a day when friends and families meet for parties, which last until the next morning. Number five, on the evening of February 3rd, people in Japan celebrate the end of winter and the, begin the beginning of spring. This is known as Setsubon. Family members throw dried beans around their homes shouting, Good luck, King! Evil spirits out! After they throw the beans, they pick them up. That's it. They pick them up, them up and eat one bean for each year of their age. Okay. Hmm. Oh my God. I will eat 48 beans. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Clear, kids? Clear? Clear, beautiful, beautiful traditions. I didn't know some of them. Okay, volunteers, five volunteers is 8.51. It is almost living. A bell will be ringing. Okay, who wants to participate? 
Okay. Oh, oh my God. <clears throat> Ladies first, Mario. <laughs> yep. Let's yep, yep. give the turn to Elena, okay? <laughs> You're second, okay? Okay, Elena, go ahead. Or maybe you can choose the number of the paragraph you want to read. Mm, the third. The third, okay, perfect. Long ago in India, princess who needed help sent her silk bracelet to an emperor. 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 Mm -hmm. Although he did not arrive in a time to help her. Mm -hmm. he keep the bracelet. He as kept. A sign. He kept. Okay. He kept the bracelet as a sign of the bond between them. Today in India, during the festival of Raki, men promise to be royal, to be, to be loyal to their woman. Mm -hmm. In exchange, the woman, the women, them, the women, oh yes, mm -hmm. <laughs> the women give them a bracelet of silk, cotton, or gold thread. thread? How Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay, let me translate this really quick. Hace mucho tiempo en India, long ago in India, una princesa que necesitaba ayuda envió su brazalete de seda al emperador. Aunque no llegó a tiempo para ayudarla, el mantu guardó, kept, remember this, keep, kept, kept. Guardó el brazalete como símbolo de una unión, bond, James Bond, remember? Una unión entre ellos. Ahora, o sea, en estos días en India, durante el festival del Raki, eh, los hombres prometen ser leales a sus mujeres. A cambio, las mujeres les dan un brazalete de seda, algodón o hilo dorado. Okay, that is bracelet of silk, cotton, and or gold thread. That is the translation. Any word, any new word for you kids? No. It's pretty simple. Pretty simple. Okay, you go now, Maria. Which one okay. would you would you read? Okay, uh, the first. Okay, perfect. Okay. January 17 is San Anthony Day in Mexico. It's a day when people ask for protection for their animals uh, by bringing them to the church. To church. But it's to not church. to the church. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> to church. Uh, but before the animals go into the, sh into the church, uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. the people usually dress them, dress them up in flowers and ribbons. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay, let me translate. Eh, enero 17 es el día de San Antonio en México. Es un día cuando la gente pregunta eh, o pide protección por sus animales trayéndolos a la iglesia. Pero antes eh, los animales... No, pero después, repeat after me. Ok, es antes. Pero antes que los animales vayan adentro de la iglesia, la gente usualmente los viste con flores y eh, ribbons. Es, eh, ¿Cómo que se llama esto? Oh, en español. Ribbons. Listones. And ribbons. Y listones. Okay, so what is the difference between the first church and the other one? Because Mary said to the church in the beginning, but it's not. And then we see another church with God in the beginning. So, la, lo que pasa es que la, el primer church no le ponen da porque es la iglesia en general. No hablan de la iglesia como un edificio, sino que hablan de la iglesia como la iglesia en general, como cuando dicen la iglesia hizo una nueva petición a los feligreses, como un tema en general. That one doesn't need a da as an article. And the second one, they are referring to a specific church. 
o sea, a la, a la iglesia que entran con los animalitos, ¿verdad? Con sus mascotitas. Entonces, este, ahí sí, ¿verdad? Hablan de una iglesia en específica porque es un edificio. But before the animals go into the church, the people usually dress them up in flowers and ribbons. That is the one, that is the, the difference between the two church, churches. <laughs> okay, paragraph, the third paragraph, who wants to read? Remember, number two, three and number one is already read. It is missing number two, number four, and number five. Me, teacher. Who said that? Sobeita. Okay, go ahead. Yes. What's the number you want to read? Uh, paragraph two. Okay, perfect. Go ahead. On August 15, 15. of the, 15 mm -hmm. of the lunar calendar, Korean celebrate chokes. Also note of Korean Thanksgiving. It's a day when the people give. When that, people, no, when the people, when people. Uh, mm -hmm. When people give thanks for the harvest. Harvest. Mm -hmm. Harvest. Korean families honor their ancestors by going to their graves to take then rice and fruit and clean the gravesites. Great sight. Great sight. Okay, thank you. Okay. El, en agosto 15, o el 15 de agosto, ¿verdad? En agosto 15 del calendario lunar, los coreanos celebran Chusok, también conocido como el Acción de Gracias Coreano. Es un día cuando la gente da gracias por la cosecha. That is harvest. Las familias coreanas eh, dan honor, ¿verdad? A sus ancestros yendo a sus tumbas, that is graves, para llevarles arroz y fruta y limpiar sus gravesites. Es como el, el, el pedacito de la tumba, así como aquí se limpian las placas y las planchitas de, de cemento, ¿verdad? Le pagan a los niños para que los pongan bonitas y... Le, ellos puedan adornar cada año, ¿verdad? Y se quede ya bonito todo eso hasta el otro año. Entonces, gravesite, gravesite es el lugar de la tumba, es como en el terreno, ahí puesto, ¿verdad? Mm, sinceramente no recuerdo, eh, los coreanos y la cultura oriental son como en tipo lomitas que hacen las tumbas. No es vertical ni es horizontal, sino que es como tipo lomitas que van a, aplanando el montón de de, de, acuérdense que ellos ocupan urnas ellos no entierran a la gente sino que lo queman los incineran ok so um, let me see we have a picture of that maybe it's the second one you see that is the, the, the biggest square is the grave site ok the other uh, oh it's 85 59. We have only two minutes uh, left. Who wants to read? Or if you want, we can leave it for tomorrow. So uh, we can we can give opportunity to two more people. Do you agree? Yes, okay. Oh, I, I, I miss Jenny today. He's, she's not here. Hmm, I don't know why. I hope she's okay. Okay. She, mm -hmm. she write in the group. Uh, she, she wrote. Uh -huh. she, wrote. Uh, she have a problem with your inter internet. Is, is she the one that I saw? Jane Escobar. Oh yeah, you're right. Exactly. Exactly. That is the... Thank you for the for the message. I I just uh, put a smiley, but I didn't I didn't know it was Jen. Okay, thank you. Okay, kids. Um, I think relative uh, adverbial clause is a little bit difficult, but we can make it. No problem. Any any Anna. Um, if you have any problem, please text me personally, not in the group, so I can help you with the with the test. Okay. 
Thank you, Sharon. Okay. okay. Thank you, everyone, for coming and see you tomorrow. Okay. Bye bye. Take care. Okay. Bye. Day. See you tomorrow. Bye. Thank you.